Hi, this is a strategic thinking series and it's covering what are the potential weaknesses within your supply management function today and how you mitigate against them. This is part of a four part process where we're going through a SWOT analysis. So a SWOT analysis is a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats that we typically do for our clients to help you build and grow your vendor management or supply management function strategically. I'm Nick Francis. I'm the Chief Technology and Marketing Officer for Brooklyn Vendor Assurance. And I'm also a Vendor Ops Board Advisor. So what are the potential weaknesses within your supply management function today and how do you mitigate them? So one of the ones that we more commonly come across when we do our work is that it tends to be comparative to the organization size or the number of suppliers that there are within that organization, a small function. So there tends to be not a lot of people and never enough resource to get across all the critical important elements of the workload, let alone the rest of the suppliers in the suppliers tail and the, the vendor tail, etc. So what do we always recommend when we have this situation and we see this? We ask them to look at the operating model. So operating models tend to come from a centralized or decentralized kind of approach. What we recommend is you do a hybrid matrix managed model where you've got this centralized center of excellence function that sets all the blueprints, the standards, the templates, the how do you or how should you manage suppliers and kind of the architectural view of that. And then that gets cascaded out to those that regularly meet with suppliers or vendors as a set of toolkits and processes against policy to help them manage them effectively. Second one we see is a control environment that is immature, so poorly aligned with only light governance. There's no defined activity or limited standards that are documented. We always recommend define what the standard governance policy should be looking like, uh, and especially for critical and important suppliers. So where you define what you need to do with them on a regular basis, what constitutes the contractual compliance and checking that, and also then looking how you roll that out across your supplier base into the less critical and less important important suppliers going as far as you can until you think your resources are used up or the fact that the return on investment doesn't worth managing those suppliers in that way and you need to draw that line and conclude that for yourself as an organization kind of in with the first point there's a requirement to leverage the business units to greater effect but hard to obtain a consistent outcome without central control or command or metrics so once you've done as part of the first two things is worked out how you're going to have your operating model and define your standard governance what are those processes and then what processes do you mean into a, a digital platform to deploy out to help align the business units to scale the function better so what we mean by that is is having a set of processes that are aligned to a platform so it's done a consistent repeat manner every time with a consistent outcome that you can then put a set of metrics against to see did it or didn't it happen what suppliers are being managed effectively what suppliers aren't being managed effectively those that are being managed effectively but aren't performing well and then how you would on an exception basis deploy to them and help increase or enhance the performance of a failing deal as such um, it's hard to get clarity of task out of the masses to comply so when work is happening you haven't got a lot of clarity around what that looks like and then indeed if you haven't got a lot of clarity around what that looks like. If you're in a regulated industry, how do you show that you comply with the needed desired outcome that underpins the regulation? Again, the only way to do that is documented policy and processes and make sure that they are clear in terms of what is the critical path that underpins the compliance and how you need to demonstrate that accordingly. Which leads into no formal governance defined or ability to easily demonstrate compliance to audit or regulatory bodies. We say that we should be doing from a centre of excellence perspective and the operating model at the top that we mentioned, do regular spot checking. Check the policy and processes are being followed through periodic oversight. Did the thing that was meant to happen every three months against a critical and important supplier actually happen retrospectively? Go back and look at it and find out where that failed. Was it a process failure? Was it a racy like responsibility or accountability failure? and then improve that accordingly. If you can demonstrate that, if you do get the regulator come in and you can show that they're going through that periodic check-in and strength and challenging around strength, quality, control, you'd have a lot easier discussion than if you wasn't doing it at all. There's no easy way to engage second line control functions in a common dialogue such as risk or compliance. So we suggest that you, you measure common risks at the start of the engagement and periodically review the size of the risk and in line with how the executive talk about risk within the rest of the business today. So every company that I've ever been involved with has had a risk register. Supply management as a function should look to provide a supplier view of this process. So what are the supplier risks that are being carried by the business at the moment? And that comes from having a decent 
incident risk assessment process at the start of these deals that take place and the start of onboarding with a new supplier and then managing that periodically over time in a recognised risk system, of course, makes it a lot easier to, to keep track of. There's no way to leverage or track support for internal uh, subject matter experts to re- remediate concerns or deviation from contract. So what we say is you need a way to capture activity and actions consistently at scale. So however you manage your suppliers, there needs to be a way to capture the activity that's going on with them. So the standard contractual obligations and the associated actions with that in the same manner at scale across the board. There's no ability to compare vendor performance in a consistent manner. So define a vendor or supplier management framework. So define a consistent way of what you would call performance. So starting with just four categories that might be financial performance, contractual performance, performance against risk, performance against standards. You need that consistent framework, however complex or however basic, to score one supplier against the other. The benefit of this is you'll get your management structure and your exec familiar with the way that you determine what supplier performance looks like, what matrix, what what metrics, and it'll be easier to maintain on a repeatable basis and easier to score periodically for your management to be able to see and determine who's performing, who's not, if you false rank them accordingly. Information silos is a big one. So we see a lot of good work happening in management of vendors, but we see them bunched up either in disconnected departments or teams, and there's limited ways to engage with the right team that's next in the process line because either the interim process has been poorly defined or it's part of a handover from procurement into onboarding. So typically we have this drop-off of information. A good example is, is onboarding. So new supplier comes in, onboarding happens, deal signed, as then a flurry of activity that hands over over from like a procurement sort of legal side into like a business, either an implementation team or a business unit for running the relationship after that. We typically see that with no process defined or no decent data management and no central repository, the capability just kind of falls off a cliff. And then you have a scramble for the next sort of days, weeks, several months in some places to then work out what a large contract actually says and digitize that into a scope that's deliverable by both the supplier and the, the business unit in question. Even though that's been discussed about for months before that, we, we see that lagging activity time and time again. And a central repository with all that information that everyone's aware of and everyone is alerted to at the right time will, will start going a long way to solve that problem. Well, I hope that was useful. They were a number of weaknesses that we see across vendor management functions time and time again, and the way we would talk to, to our customers and our prospects around potentially addressing those those weaknesses. Love to get your feedback on it. As I said, there's a strengths one similar to this overview, and there's also an opportunities and threats one to complete the theoretical SWOT analysis of an organization and the stuff we see regularly. Thank you. To keep up with the latest Brooklyn Vendor Assurance news, subscribe here and follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Links in the description below.